Recently, Jamie Lynn Spears went on to call her daddy, and a lot of people have been talking about this interview, and I have some thoughts. But before we break down the interview, I want to give a huge shout out to my friend Mona Lisney. Go and check out Armando on Twitter and on Instagram. Today, we're going to be pulling from a thread he put together on Twitter, and he has some really great content. So go and support him. But let's go ahead and talk about this interview, because as you guys know, this was an opportunity for Jamie Lynn to go and promote her book but at the same time it was kind of like her last chance to save her reputation and it didn't go down well you describe the conservatorship as oppressive when did you come to realize that this setup was infringing on britney's rights you have to understand since i was 17 this is the she's been in the conservatorship for 13 years i've never known anything different as an adult yeah. So like, what do I know what's normal and what's not? Like this seemed to be the way things were. So I guess for whatever reason, Jamie Lynn Spears had no idea what was going on and this was just normal for Britney's life. She does claim that she tried to help Britney at some point, but um, she also says that she got in trouble and it all blew up in her face because this lawyer wasn't gonna get paid. And trust me, I believe Samuel Ingham is a pretty sketchy guy but i also know jamie spears their father is as sketchy maybe worse but jamie lynn is trying to protect him throughout this interview gave her the number of judges i put her in the, i talked to her lawyer um on the phone which blew up in my face and everybody turned against me why because i guess maybe that lawyer wasn't going to get a paycheck if he didn't have a job so why did he need me infringing on his rights right so when you it seems like Jamie Lynn is trying to push a narrative that Samuel Ingham is the bad guy here and he's pretty much why Britney's so upset. And she claims that when she did speak to him, a lot of other people got mad at her. And I wonder who she's referring to because those who would get mad would be Jamie Spears or maybe like Liam Taylor or allegedly Robin Greenhill because those people wanted Britney to be in this conservatorship. I spoke with her lawyer and I told him a lot of sh and it went nowhere. And then people got mad at me. Okay, so one narrative I'm noticing in this interview is that Samuel Ingham is the bad guy and he wasn't doing his job. Another narrative that Jamie Lynn is trying to push is that she actually had the perfect solution for Britney. Let's just get you out of LA and the conservatorship will just go away. We told my sister many times all she had to do was go live out of state for six months and the conservatorship will be absolved because she'll take residence in another state. I told her this um, many times. That was my understanding of it. Obviously, I felt like if she spoke with the judge and these different people a bit more that she could make the decision she wanted to because that's a very, you know, and by the way, from my understanding, if she wanted to end it, then that was what I was going to support. Well, Jamie Lynn, if you found this information out through a judge, you must have taken that information and ran to your father because your father actually filed to have the conservatorship extended to Florida and Louisiana. So there was there was no outing for your sister in the first place. He even extended it to Hawaii, where Brittany loves to go and visit. So literally he extended it back in May, 2019. So it seemed like you literally got that information and went to your father to try to protect him. Again, another theme throughout this video. So we, I kept telling her, all you gotta do, come live with me in my shithole right. in Louisiana. Like, come on, <laughs> let's, you know, whatever. Um, and, I don't know why. I don't know why that option wasn't something that she wanted to follow through with. Well, I but feel and of course, Jamie Lynn wasn't going to go out there and just, you know, say free Britney on her socials or advocate for her sister because she wanted to protect what she had, her luxurious life, her Hollywood career, whatever money she was allegedly getting through the state. So she was definitely not going to go and speak up. To the world right now, like nobody knows you ever tried to help her. Oh, no. And all. by the way, why was I going to go out and like say those kinds of things like and then maybe that blow up in my face. I kind of it's crazy that Jamie Lynn never felt the need to speak up for her sister. The only reason why Free Britney happened was because of public pressure, and she never felt the need to go and advocate for her sister's rights. Britney didn't have access to her phone. Jamie Lynn, you have a platform. People would have listened to you, help your sister. Why did you not speak out on social media 
or to the public when you discovered the conservatorship was oppressive? As far as I'm concerned, I would message her and I would talk to her and we had full access to talk to her. I was in contact with her as well as when I put her in contact with the judges and the legal people. Who Why does to. everyone on the... At one point, Alex asks Jamie Lynn, okay, so there was a time, a period in time, where you were involved in the conservatorship. But of course, Jamie Lynn's not having any of that. There was a period of time where you were involved in the conservatorship. And Wrong. Never involved in the conservatorship. Never, not once. There are legal documents that I can show you. Or you know what? Actually, what the media could responsibly put out there, but they don't give an F about those. No, let's get, let's, let's. Okay, Jamie Lynn. So let me remind you guys that Jamie Lynn used her power as Britney's trustee and filed and signed a verified petition to move Britney's money into blocked accounts with Lou Taylor's investment firm, Stonebridge. So unless someone else did that using her name and signature, then you are lying because you were an essential part of this conservatorship and some sketchy business going down that we uncovered from the court documents. That's what we all should be talking about. That's what Alex should be asking you about, but she didn't do her research. Jamie Lynn Spears was never involved in any capacity in the conservatorship. Legally documented, factually documented by her own team. I don't think Jamie Lynn realizes that we can go and read court documents because there are actual documents out there that show that she was trying to move Britney's trust assets into Lou Taylor's firm to manage those, which would benefit Lou and Taylor and her business. When Alex asked her specifically, why didn't you use your platform to advocate for Britney's freedom? She goes back to speaking to this lawyer and all of that. And it just seems like that's her BS story to get her by. Anytime she told me she wanted help, I gave her the chances and the opportunities and the people to help her. She knows all of that. Why wouldn't she just have clarified that and stopped all of this? That's where I don't understand, but I- Jamie Lynn expects Britney to go and clarify everything for her on Britney's Instagram post, but Jamie Lynn doesn't feel obligated to go and clarify the free Britney movement for everyone else or her involvement or how she's been so, so helpful. As you guys know, Jamie Lynn did share a text message in the interview between her and Britney and a text message that she actually sent to Sam, Britney's boyfriend. In her text message to Britney, Jamie Lynn tells her that Britney's former lawyer, Samuel Ingham, called their dad to inform him that they're trying to end the conservatorship. But during the interview, though, Jamie Lynn covers for Jamie Spears and says the lawyer called other lawyers instead. So he went on told on you to like your dad and everyone that like the like the, other... the thing is, I think that maybe my dad was maybe the face. There's a lot of people behind there. Yeah. I think it was more of like the lawyers and whoever it was. And, you know, Jamie Lynn truly is daddy's little girl, and she'll do anything to protect him from this conservatorship mess. Even though she does kind of look like Ted Cruz, which is not poking fun, but like everyone's just been saying that, so whatever. Even though she does kind of look like Ted Cruz, she's definitely her father's daughter. During the second part of this interview, Jamie Lynn did share that she was kind of in a riff with her mother because her mom, Lynn, was trying to get Jamie Spears out as conservator. And it's clear that Jamie Lynn is very close to her father. So she just stopped talking to her mother and there was like a family feud because Lynn was trying to advocate for Brittany. Why did you stop talking to your mom? That was a really hard time. Because I wanted her to stop inserting herself in the conservatorship. Um, and so I didn't understand why we were bringing more people into the conservatorship as opposed to like taking them out. I don't know. But I didn't speak to her and I thought that like, and I thought maybe that too would like show like Brittany, like how committed I was to her. Like if, you know, she had an issue with her. I was like, I wanted to like, you know, be there, I guess. I don't know. I'm stupid, I guess. There are parts inside this like second part of the interview where it seems like Jamie Lynn is making sense and she's acting like she's on Brittany's side, but there's a weird, like, just this weird like wall up where she will not address her father and not address Lou M. Taylor. And even in part one, she like forgot who was managing her, forgot who her business manager was, forgot all these people. And it's so convenient because the people who have created this problem and made it bigger for Brittany are the people that she's standing by. 
And look what's happened to my family when all these people have inserted themselves. This one's got a lawyer. That one's got a lawyer. This one's got a friend. This one's got an agent. We need to separate it all and just be a family again, or else we're just going to end up back where we started. And that's not what we want. So there are also certain answers that Jamie Lynn gave that just give me red flags. Like Alex asked about Brittany's like phone situation. And you guys know that Brittany may have had a phone, but her phone was being mirrored and followed and watched by her team. They had iPads that would mimic the text messages. So even if Brittany did always have a phone, there's no way that Jamie Lynn did not know the level of, I guess, just monitoring that was going on because I feel like she is so tight with the people who do this that she's got to understand how this business works. Why does everyone on the internet think that she didn't have a phone? I don't know, but I know, I mean, she had her phone. I mean, I know that because like I would, you know, I was, Talk to her. But there were certain times where I wouldn't understand why, but she would block me or whatever it was. And I felt like I didn't, like, I, I didn't, I, I didn't understand sometimes, like, where or what my position was or how I could be helpful. But also, I was dealing with my own dynamics in our relationship. And I was getting to a place where mine and her relationship was becoming a bit more challenging and unhealthy for me. At one point, Alex presents a question that makes it seem like Jamie Lynn has gone through everything Brittany has because they have the same parents. And I understand that. And I'm sure that Jamie Lynn has gone through her fair amount of trauma. But Jamie Lynn did not go through what Britney did. And this entire interview is giving me victim energy because she's trying to act like, like, oh, what about me? What about my struggles? And it's it's just so convenient because when her sister is going through this conservatorship battle and it's also also public and everyone's talking about it, she decides to release this book. And keep in mind, in this book, Britney's mentioned hundreds of times. So it's just like, it's honestly a hit piece for multiple people. And I don't know why she's playing victim. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, people aren't, or they're acting like you are. Like, it's okay for that to be her experience but like i could have the same exact one but like i don't i don't get any nobody cares that that was my situation right too. i saw our friend party like brit on twitter bring up this clip of lance bass where he says that jamie lynn was okay with everything going on in britney's conservatorship this clip came out in september 2020 where lance says that jamie lynn is okay with everything the one thing that i do know is i know jamie lynn her sister and to me if jamie is okay with everything going on i feel like she really has her sister's back during all this so i trust her to you know give us the real information well then on november 2nd 2020 jamie lynn resigns as britney's trustee of that account and then on november 12th 2020 jamie lynn sends that text message to help britney out and honestly the timing seems very convenient for jamie lynn because she probably doesn't want to be investigated like everyone else you guys have probably heard that the fbi is on britney's father's case and it looks like they're going to be getting him in some big trouble as far as the claims from her like you know her baby daddy sister i just like i've seen some of them i just feel like we that's just like i don't know it's just not it's like st overstepping a little bit for me so not really into it but we could always talk about this conservatorship and the caller daddy and everything else but i'm not going to go and do all of that but i do think it's really interesting and it does speak to jamie lynn's character because i mean look at how she defended herself and a lot of articles came out and they were like uh this whole like you know reputation campaign whatever this was just like was a slap in her face because really people saw her true colors and britney is not happy with any of it i want to hear what you guys think in the comments below i do think part one of caller daddy was a lot more enjoyable and jamie lynn seemed pretty genuine in that part but um part two seemed like lawyers were involved at this point the season desists were out and um it seems very messy and like she was trying to put out this text message to reshape the narrative and i get it like it, you know i get why she wants to do it but it doesn't fit in with reality and the timeline and it's all oh so convenient for her when she's at rock bottom right now to look like britney's savior and i just think we need to look back 
uh, what was going on at this time and realized that uh, she just got denied in court. She, the trustee's situation is not going to work out. And of course, she doesn't want to be on the bad side of everything. So she's been the perfect middleman between Brittany and her father. And it makes sense why Brittany blocks Jamie Lynn because Jamie Lynn is just echoing whatever her father has to say. Anyways, I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below and I'll see you guys soon. Bye guys.